Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Monica Mellon and I'm a third year PR student at San Jose State University and I make new videos at least every single Sunday. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Today I'm going to be doing an updated SJSU orientation video. I made a video just like this after I went to my freshman orientation two years ago and a lot of things have changed so I wanted to make this updated video so that you all can get some updated information and advice. This video is probably going to be pretty long but I really want to take the time to give you all some updated information and advice and answer some questions that were asked on some of my previous videos and on my Instagram. I'm going to be going through a lot of different things in this video from what to bring, how to get there, and what orientation is actually like. So I hope this helps some of you. If there's anything that I don't cover in this video, feel free to comment down below or DM me and I will try my best to answer your questions. And just as a quick disclaimer, SJSU is not paying me to make this video. I go to school there and I work there, but the university itself is not involved in this video at all. I'm just going to give you all my honest advice and tell you some of the things that I wish that I knew when I was going to my freshman orientation. So now that's out of the way, let's get into the video. The first thing that I want to talk about is what to bring to orientation. I've had a few people ask me about this. There's some things that you really need to make sure to bring, so please pay attention to this part of this video. The first thing that I would suggest bringing is probably pretty obvious, but it's a backpack or some sort of bag. You're going to be getting a lot of papers, and this is just going to make it a lot easier for you to keep track of everything, because you're going to get some stuff that you really don't want to lose. The next thing is a water bottle, because hydration is really key. You're going to be outside for at least part of the orientation, and it might be kind of hot. I'm not really sure. The weather kind of has a mind of its own here, but bring a water bottle. There'll be plenty of places to fill it up and stay hydrated. The next thing that I would suggest bringing is some sort of charger or power bank because the orientation goes from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and you're probably going to need to charge your phone to so make sure that you have something to charge it with. The next few things are the most important things that you absolutely need to bring and those are your admissions letter and your orientation receipt. I don't have my receipt anymore but make sure that you bring that. The next thing that you need to bring if you want to get your tower ID card which is SJC's version of a student ID is some sort of official government issued ID. You can bring a passport or a state ID or some other form of official ID. Now that you're an adult you really need to have an ID at all times. So if you don't have any official form of ID, get one as soon as possible. The last thing that I would suggest bringing if you have it is any transcripts for classes that you want to transfer to SJSU. Those could be AP classes that you took in high school or classes that you took at a community college or any other college. You can always transfer the credits later, but having those transcripts there is going to be really helpful when you're registering for classes. And if you've never taken a college class before, that's totally fine. So that's pretty much everything that I would suggest bringing. You don't have to bring a bunch of stuff. Just come in comfortable clothes and bring a jacket because it's probably going to be freezing inside. And you should also put on sunscreen in the morning so you don't get sunburned. That's pretty much everything that I would suggest bringing. If you want to, you can bring a laptop or an iPad, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when I talk about registration. So the next thing that I want to talk about is getting to orientation and who you should bring with you. If you don't already know this, you have the option of bringing a parent or sibling or grandparent or boyfriend or girlfriend or anyone else to orientation with you. It's completely optional, but you can bring someone if you want to. And someone asked me on Instagram if it was worth it to pay $90 to bring someone with you. I personally brought my dad with me to orientation. He really wanted to come and I think he really enjoyed it, but it wasn't really that big of a deal for him to come because I already live in San Jose, so he didn't have to fly across the country or anything. We just took the light rail there and he took the day off. I think regardless of where you're coming from, it is worth it to pay the $90 if you have someone that really wants to go with you or if you just don't want to go to your orientation alone. It can be kind of scary to go to a new place and not know anyone, so it might be nice to have someone that you know to go with you, but it's completely up to you. They do have a program for parents and family members and guests, so they're not going to be bored and they are going to be able to learn a lot more about SJSU. So if they want to come, bring them. In the grand scheme of things, $90 really isn't that expensive. The next thing that I want to talk about is getting to orientation, parking, traffic, and all of that. If you're coming from really far away and you're flying in, I highly suggest flying into the San Jose airport if possible. It's pretty close to campus and it's just gonna make everything a lot easier for you. And when you're trying to get from the airport to campus, there's two main methods of transportation that I would recommend. The first is using public transit. There's a free shuttle that comes to the airport and will take you to the airport light rail station. And then once you're at the airport light rail station, you can get on any southbound train and get off at Paseo de San Antonio station and walk to campus. It's only about a 15 minute ride on the light rail and it only costs $2.25, so that is by far the cheapest option. The second method of transportation from the airport that I would suggest is taking a lift. I personally think a lift is a lot cheaper than taking a taxi and I've never had a problem getting a lift in San Jose and I've never had any problems with lift drivers in San Jose, so I'd highly suggest using Lyft. If you've never used Lyft before, you can use my code to get your first ride free. So if you're not flying, but you don't live close to the Bay Area and you're driving up from Southern California or Northern California or some other state, I would suggest driving up the night before and either staying in the on-campus accommodations or in a hotel in downtown San Jose. If you have any specific questions about hotels or accommodations, feel free to DM me or send me an email and I'll try to help you out. And finally, if you're from the Bay Area, I would suggest using public transportation if possible. Traffic can be really bad and it can be kind of difficult to find parking spots. If you have any questions about that, feel free to message me. I work at the transportation department of AS at SJSU, so I know a lot about transportation. If you are planning on driving, I would suggest going on Google 
maps and calculating the time that it'll take you to drive there and then adding somewhere between a half hour and an hour to that just in case traffic's really bad or you have a hard time finding parking you should be able to park in the 10th street garage but i would highly suggest adding some buffer time just in case there's any sort of problem so those are my main suggestions for getting there my number one bit of advice is just to leave really early so now that i've talked about getting to orientation it's time to actually talk about what the orientation is actually like so the first thing that happens when you get to orientation is you have to wait in a really long line to check in if you don't want to wait in line get there a little bit early and the check-in process will probably be a lot easier for you so if there's time after you check in you can go on a tour of the campus and get some breakfast i'm not sure if i mentioned this earlier but food is provided you don't have to bring any food you can obviously bring your own food if you want to or if you have food allergies but otherwise you don't really need to worry about bringing any food so after everyone is checked in they're gonna have a welcome at the auditorium and just go over some basic information about orientation it might be a little bit boring but just try to stay awake after that they have a panel where you can learn more about student services and meal plans and other things like that this is a really good opportunity to ask any questions that you have and then after that you get to meet your orientation leader and your orientation group you're probably going to go around in a circle and say your name and your major and where you're from and stuff like that and do some of those get to know you games but that's also a good time to ask your orientation leader about any questions that you have if they've already been through orientation they've already been at sgsu for at least a year so really take advantage of that time and ask any questions that you have after that they're going to have lunch and the resource fair from what i've heard they're going to be splitting the group in half so half of the people will be at lunch half the people will be at the resource fair and then you're going to switch so you get to have lunch and go to the resource fair and ask questions the resource fair is one of the best parts of orientation there's a bunch of tables set up from different departments and organizations on campus and you basically just get to go around to the tables and ask any questions that you have i'll be at the resource fair with my work transportation solutions so feel free to come up to me and ask any questions you have about transportation or just say hi the resource fair can be a little bit hectic and crowded you're going to be in a room with hundreds if not thousands of people so it's going to be really busy and hard to hear sometimes but don't be afraid to go up to the different tables and ask questions we're there to answer your questions and help you out in any way that we can so that's the resource fair and lunch pretty self-explanatory now after that they're going to give you some free time to do anything that you do on campus during that time i would suggest going to the student services center and getting your tower id because once you have this you can start taking advantage of the resources on campus and you can start getting student discounts which are pretty awesome so if you have an id try to get this during that time another thing that you can get with this id that i'm not just mentioning because i work there is your smart pass clipper card you only have to pay three dollars for this once and you can ride all of the vta light rails and regular and rapid buses 365 days a year completely for free so I would highly suggest getting this after you have your tower ID and you're enrolled. This has saved me thousands of dollars during my college career. I do work at Transportation Solutions, but I've been promoting this in my videos even before I worked there. So definitely take advantage of this. Even if you just use it a few times, it's still completely worth it because it's only $3 and a regular fare is $2.25. So just get this, it's awesome, trust me. And if you have any questions about transportation, feel free to come to my work and ask me. My work is in the student union all the way at the end past the bookstore. So come and talk to me about transportation if you want to. So then after the free time is over, they're gonna have a roster check to make sure that you're still there. It's very important to stay on campus for the entire time. People have been blocked from registering for their classes because they left. So just stay on campus, it's just one day. Think you can handle it. So after the roster check, there's a diversity in Title IX presentation. It's probably not going to be the most interesting thing in the world, but it's really important information, so please try to absorb as much of it as possible. So after the presentation, you're going to be split into groups by college to register for your classes. This is one of the most important parts of orientation, and there's quite a few things that I want to say about this. And I also want to take the time to answer some questions that you all have asked. They don't tell you to prepare anything for registration, but I suggest doing some research ahead of time. I'm going to link this down below. But there's a page on the SJC website where you can get all the roadmap for the different majors. So look at that ahead of time so you can get a sense of the classes that you might want to register for. If you want to switch your major, get the roadmap for the major that you want to switch into. If you're not coming in with any college credits, you're probably mostly going to be taking general education classes, which are the same for all majors. But if you do have some credits and you want to switch your major, I would suggest taking the intro class or one of the prerequisites for that major. I completely understand that you might have picked a major that you're not interested in anymore in your application. Maybe you got pressured into picking it by your parents. Maybe you were confused. Maybe you changed your mind. Whatever the reason is, I completely understand and I want to encourage you to pursue the major that you want to pursue and set yourself up to be able to transfer into the major that you want to transfer into. So a question that I've been asked about registration quite a few times is how hard is it to get classes at orientation and honestly it really depends on what orientation you are in. In a lot of my previous videos I've suggested signing up for the earliest orientation possible so if you did that you're probably going to be completely fine. You're probably going to have a pretty good schedule so if you're in one of the first 
three orientations or so, you really don't have to worry that much. For those of you that didn't take my advice and signed up for some of the later orientations, it's gonna be more difficult to get classes, but it's not gonna be impossible and I do have some tips for you. The first tip that I have for anyone going to orientation, whether you're in the first orientation or the last orientation, is to plan your classes out ahead of time. Go to the scheduler, consult the roadmap, try to decide what classes you wanna take, and once you've done that, add those classes to the cart. I would suggest doing this the night before because if you do this too early, all of the classes might be gone. I added all of my classes to the cart in advance when I was going into my first semester and I ended up getting all the classes that I wanted and I had a really great schedule my freshman year. If you end up changing your mind after talking to one of the advisors at orientation, that's completely fine, but just make sure that you're updating your cart while all of this is happening. You can do that on your own laptop or iPad or one of the ones at the school, but make sure that you keep updating it throughout the process and as soon as registration opens, press that submit button because there's going to be hundreds of other people at the same orientation trying to get the same classes as you. So if you press submit right when it opens, you're going to have a huge advantage over all the people that are still mulling things over and talking with their advisors. It's completely okay to change your classes later, but I think that it's a lot better to at least have one schedule you can just have as backup. That's my main bit of advice for registration. I also want to give some class recommendations for people that have later orientations. Some of you have messaged me saying that you're in one of the later orientations and you're really worried about getting classes. So there's two classes that I really want to recommend that I took early on in my college career that were really helpful. The first class is called EDCO 4. It's a career exploration class that counts for one of your GEs. There's usually spots left. Professors are usually pretty open to adding people to the class. So definitely check out EDCO 4, especially if you're unsure about your major. I knew what I wanted to major in going into college, but I still found the class really helpful because it really helped me to learn more about my strengths and weaknesses and what some other career options might be for me if I end up hating PR. The second class that I highly recommend is called Psi 75, more commonly known as Braven. It is a career and leadership accelerator class and it was honestly one of the best classes that I've taken in my entire college career. The class has a few hundred people, but you're broken into small groups of about 10 people and the teacher of the class is a professional at a company in the Bay Area. So it's a really great opportunity to learn from people who are actually working in Silicon Valley. I learned so much from Braven and I even had an interview at eBay because of it. So I'd highly recommend signing up for Braven. You have to apply separately on their website, so I'll throw a link to that down below. So be sure to check out Braven if you're looking for an elective. It's an awesome class. That's pretty much all the advice that I have for registration. If you have any specific questions, feel free to message me or comment down below. Registration is the last thing that you're required to do at orientation. So after you're done registering, you can go home or explore campus or explore San Jose. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say in this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment down below or DM me. I'm always willing to answer any questions that you all have. If you're watching this around the time that it's posted, I will be at VidCon in Anaheim next week. So if you're there, come say hi to me. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Stay awesome and I'll see all of you very soon with a new video. Goodbye.